What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to do with you guys. This is the Best Deck Knives Bowie Tie. On the uh, unboxing I said bow tie because I'm an idiot. Um, anyways, this is a very compelling knife from Best Deck and it, anybody who's watched my channel for a while or been watching my channel for a while you'll know you're like yeah I know we get it. Every time there's a Best Deck knife that comes across your table you're like oh it's the best thing ever. Um, yeah, I, I do that, but that's because Bestec is very consistent with their quality, and they have, Bestec's interesting because they're kind of filling the void for me that was left by ZT after they decided to, you know, go a different direction. Bestec likes to do kind of big overbuilt frame locks, but they put an emphasis on consistent quality control and ergonomic, good ergonomic lines. Case in point, the Fractal, that didn't look like anything that would have been even close to an ergonomic design. Or the Malware, is that what it is? Both very angular, very pointy, very like, we're, we're going to attack your hand kind of knives. And the Malware was kind of like that. But the Fractal, Fractal, was uh, great, you know? Uh, this knife is a completely different design, but all those other elements that I really enjoy about Bestec are certainly, have certainly been applied to it. And we're going to talk about that today. Um, if you are, whether you are new to my channel, you've been around for a long time, I do have Patreon. So if you'd like to get your hands on a cool sticker and help support the channel at the same time, uh, you can follow the link down in the description and uh, check that out. Um, you'll also gain access to my once a week Patreon exclusive content by joining any tier, even the $1 tier. So if you'd like to do that, the support would absolutely mean the world to me. This knife was provided by the Apex Passaround Group, which means by extension, the manufacturer's best deck themselves. Um, as usual, I will try not to let that affect my review, but it should be pretty easy considering I don't get to keep the knife. Okay, overall length of the Bowie tie coming in at a, just a perfect, for me, it's a little over, 8.3 inches overall from tip to scale. You're definitely looking at more than three and a half inches on the blade. 3.6 inches, actual cutting edge, three, point, three and a quarter because of this very generous forward choil. Uh, how about some size comparisons here? Up against the Ontario Rat Model 1, Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall. So there you go. Anybody who's got a Rat 1, it's the exact same. Well, no, it's not. I'm sorry. That's 8.3. <laughs> uh, it looks very similar. We're at, a, we're at ever, you know, an ever so slight angle, and that's to take care of the, the glare because of the angle of my lamps here and here. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is actually, the Rat 1's just a little bit longer. How about up against the Spyderco? PM2, PM2 is coming in at 8.3, there we go. These two are actually the exact same length, even though the angle of my camera is not making it look that way. Uh, they absolutely are. If they're, if I was gonna give one just a slight, just a smidgen, it's gonna be this guy, but they're very close. Uh, how about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Ritter Hogue is coming in at eight inches overall. And last but not least, the Spyderco Para 3. Para 3 coming in at seven and a quarter inches overall. So how is the action on this guy? Well, uh, pretty much the same as every best stick knife that I've ever handled, it's basically perfect. It's not quite fall shut, but just with a little bit of encouragement, it does get there. I would imagine, given the tier, by the way, this is definitely in their upper tier. Ben, uh, best stick has like a, a high tier and a low tier. It's the same as a lot of companies nowadays. I would imagine over time, this will become fall shut or with slight adjustment of the pivot, it might achieve that type of action. It's a fairly large, well, it's a very large, very, you know, fairly thick blade, and it doesn't take much to get it to fall into place, but it's certainly on par with exactly what you would expect uh, with a knife in this caliber. So I'm very happy with the action. Um, how's the carry profile? So total, I mean, overall thickness up against like pair of three, you can see there it's a little bit thicker uh, at the butt, about the same. So it definitely is thicker, but it's also contoured, which sort of gives the illusion of it being smaller than it actually is. Uh, this way, however, it's definitely got both the uh, Para 3 and PM2 beat in terms of height. Uh, these two knives, as I always say, uh, have awkward carry profiles and uh, they're still pretty easy to carry, so this is just fine. Um, where it definitely does not have them beat is in weight. Now, what we're looking at here for materials is a contoured titanium bolster uh, and then liners that go under what's actually, um, this is marbled carbon fiber overlay, a marbled carbon, fi oh my gosh, 
a marbled carbon fiber overlay. What is wrong with me? Uh, no milling on the inside, given how this lays in there. And then we have um, a blade stock thickness of 150, yeah, 100, probably about 150 thousandths. Um, and then you also have quite a bit of height to this blade too. So there's a lot of mass here, but I think, I think I'm about to be pleasantly surprised. Let's see. Yeah, not, not, I, I keep thinking that's a five ounce knife. No, you know, 4.55 ounces. Okay, that's not bad. For a lot of people, that's going to be too heavy. It certainly doesn't meet that sort of ounce and inch thing, but it's not the heaviest thing in the world. And as far as carry profile goes, I mean, this thing coming in and out of my pocket, I don't have a problem with how it carries. Um, and it has that illusion of being not as thick as it actually is because of the contouring on the scales. So no issues there. So what materials are we looking at? Like I said, we're talking about tumbled titanium bolsters on both sides, marbled carbon fiber, which is one of the options. There's actually a gold shred carbon fiber, which is one of the options. That's pretty cool. Uh, gold shred is something that I only ever used to see on like mega high-end custom knives. Then we started seeing it being made into custom scales for knives on the secondary market. And now apparently you can get it as an option on this knife. Um, it adds very little, if if no cost. I was trying to look at all the different variations of this knife that are out there, um, and I don't think it's actually the scales that change the price. Um, I think it's the finish on the blade. Um, but you have an option between marble or gold shred. That's pretty cool. Uh, and then you have a uh, an M390 blade. That's the blade seal that you're looking at there. Blades can come um, in either this uh, two-tone sort of satin. Let me wipe my stupid fingerprints off of there. Uh, hand rub satin there. It looks like hand rub satin. I don't know that it actually is, but it's a satin, you know, sort of uh, horizontal line uh, finish and then this bead blast finish uh, on the blade. You can also get it uh, satin all the way through the blade, which is pretty cool. Um, the, uh, the blade is awesome. Uh, <laughs> I just think the blade is so cool. Oh yeah, by the way, you can also get, there's a version of this where you can get a bronze titanium bolster. So you have to imagine with me, I was looking at the one, it was a satin blade it was a bronze bolster and it was a gold shred carbon fiber. Oh, that is the most expensive variant, but it's not its not a whole lot more than what this one is. We're going to talk about that, but guys, it is beautiful. Take a look at it. I'll provide links for as many different versions of this down in the description. So if you want to take a look at all the different versions, just go down in my description and take a look. The blade is definitely my favorite part of this knife. Not only is it aesthetically pleasing and fans of the Bowie or Bowie grind or clip point grinds, whatever you want to say, uh, it's, well, they're actually, they're, no, there is a difference between clip point and Bowie. They can be a clip point, not a Bowie blade. I think what makes it the Bowie blade, and somebody can, can you know, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not a professional, guy, so I, I depend on my audience to correct me when I'm incorrect, right? Is it the, the sort of growing, you know, like it, as it sweeps up here, it also gets wider down here? Is that what creates a Bowie blade? I don't know. In any case, it's essentially a mini folding Bowie. It, it, it's almost like a folding pirate sword. That's what it makes me think of. Very, very generous forward choil. I, I've always said, like, if you're going to do a choil, dedicate to it. Give me enough room to really get up there. Don't, don't, you know, don't go halvesies on it and it's just, you got like a one knuckle choil. I don't like that. Like, give me room to get up there. This right here, this curvature back here, I can just lay my thumb down. Oh, that's so nice. And you even come up here. That's awesome. I love that. And on top of that, let me assure you guys, this gets nice and thick thin down here. Not the thinnest I've ever felt, but nice and thin. This is definitely going to be a nice performance oriented blade with some nice ability to puncture. Of course, with most clip points, be cognizant of that tip. It's not super reinforced down here. Don't be jamming it into stuff and prying around, um, but should be fairly durable if they have made use of M390's composition and heat treated it properly, which I assume that they have, but I don't know for sure, then this is going to be an extremely performance oriented blade that's going to have um, some excellent longevity in terms of edge retention. Um, as is the case with most Bestec knives that I've handled, they just print the steel on one side and then the Bestec logo on the other. I always appreciate that. Let's take a look at these bolsters. So you can, I don't know if the camera's actually picking it up, but there is the slightest bit of micro milling in these scales. It looks like they're perfectly smooth, but there's like some, I wonder, do I have a magnifying glass out here? I should, I really need to, oh, I do. I've got a magnifying glass, hang on. Let's see if this works. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can pick this up on camera. Uh, 
<laughs> oh my gosh, there's no way it's going to focus. The lens is dirty as well. Um, yeah, I was so excited that this was going to work and it's just not going to. I'm sure they're like, dude, you do not know how to use a magnifying glass. Uh, okay, is this? It's still not going to pick it up. I almost have got this figured out, but there are diagonal micro micro lines in that titanium and it's nice. I don't know if that was just, you know, that's just how they're, what their machine spits out, you know? Um, I don't know if that, that was intentional, but it's, it's nice, you know, when I noticed it. Everything is super just, I mean, this is perfect, perfect contouring, perfectly knocked down, no issues, nothing here. This right here, this transition between the titanium and the carbon fiber is seamless. Those lines do sort of translate partially into the carbon fiber. The carbon fiber looks great. I'm not seeing any voids, maybe a little bit back here. The nature of marbled carbon fiber is to have a few voids. And, I, and I'm saying that because I remember way back on my review, the Orca, I was like coming down, I was like, oh, there's voids in here. And another reviewer did that. And then I got the response from the maker. And then it was just like, that's the nature of marbled carbon fiber. And the truth is, is that there are areas of it, you know, like if you, when it, when it's being made that might be voidless, but it's just random. I mean, like the process of putting it together apparently yields a couple of voids here and there. So on some knives you might get, it might be completely voidless on on other knives. It might not, it's not the same process apparently as regular carbon fiber. So little things like this, uh, where is it? I'm not even sure that that's a void other than just the neck, a deep, deeper shadow. You can see those lines in there. So maybe, maybe what I was seeing wasn't a void in any case though, if you do get a version of this with a small void, I wouldn't call it the end of the world. Unfortunately, we do have what I assume are T6 screws. Let me go ahead and get out my handy dandy we a bit selector. What is my thing with like having to repeat the line exactly the same way? And I don't know, maybe it's just that's how it's installed or installed in my mind. Uh, I'm gonna guess that those are T6. What are we at here? T6 right there. Um, both of these items are extremely inexpensive and I literally use them every day. You guys see them on the channel all the time. There are links down in the description for both of these items as well as some of the knives that I show on my channel every single day, whether they are high-end US production knives or budget knives. They are categorized. You guys hear me say that all the time and I'm sure there's a whole bunch of you who are like, I hear you say that all the time but I've never gone down to your description. Take a sec to open the description, seriously. There's a ton of stuff down there and it's categorized. So scratch that itch. Um, let's go ahead and check. That's T6. Yeah, T6, T6, T6. Pivot, like most Bestec knives, I'm gonna guess is T8. So let's check that here real quick. Yep, that's a T8. So T8, T6. As I always say, T6 sucks. It's not a deal breaker. Um, I just wish everything was T8. Maybe Bestec will make that change in the future. Maybe they don't care. Maybe most people don't care and it's just me whining into the darkness. I don't know. I wish everything was T8. Um, coming back here, you can see we do have a little lanyard hole. That's fine, no issue. It doesn't, um, yeah, you know what? It is kind of in the way of the pocket clip. Truthfully, I, I hadn't noticed that and it's because I'll tell you right now, the pocket clip is just fine. It's a little oddly shaped, but it's really easy to get in and out of my pocket. And that's partially due to how smooth and contoured these scales are, right? There's not as much surface underneath this pocket clip to create friction as it's going over your pocket. Move these lanyard holds back. Stop stop trying to put them at the butt to, to make room for the lanyard hole um, as a priority over the pocket clip. The pocket clip's position on the back end of the knife should take priority over the lanyard hole. It's not that big of a deal because again, the knife doesn't care. It's not like the PM, the pair of three situation where you ha almost have to get an aftermarket clip. Um, it still does carry just fine, but I'd have just preferred it go a little bit higher and we <laughs> move a screw or something so that we can have the lanyard hole back here, but okay, whatever. I really do like the backspacer, um, the uh, this sort of semi gear pattern backspacer. It looks great. It's nice and meets up correctly with the, uh, what looks like the liners. It's actually just the titanium frame with the overlays, but nice contrast here. It looks really nice back here. Pocket clip has the exact same finish and contouring as the scales, and it's also titanium. Kind of weird, but also not, not really all that weird. 
it's just kind of meh. You know, whatever, it works just fine and it doesn't create a hot spot. So I don't have, I mean, you can, I can feel it a little bit on my palm. Doesn't create what I would actually call a hot spot and there's no sharp edges here or anything like that. So no issue. Uh, and then there is, of course, a steel lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop. The knife came uh, perfectly centered and it locks up very secure at about, it's looking like only about 25%, but rest assured it is absolutely secure. There is shouldering. So that wraps nicely around the stop pin. That's nice. Boy, this is a this is a very, very nice knife. I'm gonna say, okay, you know, like again, the little things that bother me, T6 screws bothers me in like everything, uh, every single review that I do, <laughs> or like half the reviews that I do. I don't like the position of the pocket clip, you know, considering if there were no lanyard hole on there at all it probably wouldn't bother me. But because there's a lanyard hole on there and I can see that they made room for the lanyard hole as a priority over the pocket clip, it just bugs me. Put it right here. Just make a little oval right here. You wanna see what I'm talking about? Let me show you on the Hinder XM18. See how they did that? Same kind of thing. Now, technically, the funny thing is, is the Hinder actually <laughs> carries more shallow because of the shape of this end of it. But two screws right here, two screws, and they put it right in between there. That's fine, it doesn't need to be here. Just put it here and put the pocket clip up here, right? I'll take the extra deepness and carry it. People are like, why are you getting so hung up on that? It's not a big deal. You're right, it's not a big deal. That's not a reason not to buy this knife because like I said, it still carries plenty deep. Um, let me emphasize this. After playing with this and like laying, you know, no matter what position you're carrying this in, right? If you're carrying, I mean, you're going here, you're going here, here, you're going reverse grip like this, you put locking in your pinky or whatever. Um, this knife just feels good. This is one of those knives, there's, there's a difference in my opinion between a knife that has good ergonomics, right? Like the, I actually still have, sorry, I'm walking away for a second, I actually still have the fractal. So both of these knives have good ergonomics. They are completely different designs. Both have good ergonomics. I was very happy with how the, the fractal felt in hand. But there's a difference between my, how my brain, you know, like when I picked this up and locked into it, I was like, oh, oh yeah, especially right here. Right here, that made it for me. Ergonomics really count in my mind. If I really feel comfortable using a knife, you know, it's really gonna, it's gonna set that fire in my brain and just sort of sync up with it. That in combination with the fact that we have a very classic looking, you know, it's like, it looks elegant, it looks expensive, um, but it also looks classic. And it also kind of looks aggressive, you know? I, I like that. Couple that with the fact that you can get either bronze or tumbled on the bolsters. You can get gold shred carbon fiber and you can get a satin blade if you want to. And the difference in price is literally, the version you're seeing right here is about 250 to $255. And the version, the fully upgraded, you know, if you want bronze, you want carbon fiber shred, I'm not sure that the bronze anno actually adds to the price. Carbon fiber uh, with gold shred and then a fully satin blade goes up to only $288. I'm, I'm pretty on board with that. You know, I the higher up it gets, it's like, oh, you're just adding aesthetics. You know, if you want that, it's there. But truthfully, we're looking at a base price on this knife of between $250 and $255. Um, and I'm happy with that, considering what you get. No, it's not an American-made knife, but you're getting a lot of elements, like a lot of American-made knives that are commanding that price. Um, sure, they might have carbon fiber, titanium, and M390 on them, but not in this fashion. Um, the contouring and the final finish work on everything and how this meets up seamlessly, you know, the type of carbon fiber you're getting, the finishes on the blade, the excess work that, that goes into making sure that all the edges are nicely rounded down. I mean, there's a lot of excess here for 250 bucks. So yeah, you're buying a Chinese knife, but you're, you're buying a very polished Chinese knife. Um, if this had out of box the exact same action as the fractal, I would have lost my mind. And in some cases, you might actually get that. I'm not saying you couldn't adjust this a little bit and, my, and, and it wouldn't achieve that action or that it won't achieve that action over time because it is running on bearings. Um, but in any case, it's very recommendable. It is on the higher end. You know, it is, it's teetering on a, a little, you know, it, really expensive versus some of the other stuff that I recommend out there. But for those of you who are looking, you know, obviously can carry a larger knife, it's legal in your area, you're looking for something like this and you're looking to spend about $250 to $255, something like that, 
Um, yeah, this is definitely a recommend, recommendable knife. In fact, I'm gonna go as far as to say, as far as Bestex high-end, I think this is my favorite high-end Bestex knife that I have handled. Now, I've not handled everything that they, uh, that's, that's been out there. The, I've handled the Escra and the, uh, I can't remember what the other one was, but, uh, you know, the malware and then, of course, the, uh, the Fractal here recently and some others. You know, you can go back and see uh, in my, uh, in my, my, uh, my videos, but of all the high-end stuff that I've handled from Bestech, I think this is my favorite. Function, aesthetic, ergonomics, it's all there. This is a great knife. Very few things to complain about, um, but guys, I think that's going to be pretty much it. So this knife will go on my most recommended knives playlist. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this Metal Complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.